around 2015, father must have decided enough's enough. It's time to wake this child up and snap her out of her slumber. It started slowly by returning to church again. My oldest son found that uh, a friend went to a local church, so I, I excitedly jumped at the opportunity to attend again, and we began growing in our faith. I knew this was the catalyst to get us into yet another church. This time around, I, was, I slowly rebuilt my relationship with Jesus, even being moved by Holy Spirit in the Baptist Church, which didn't move in the Spirit. As I began drawing near to Jesus again, he drew near to me and began speaking to me in different ways, at first through others. So, we had attended the latest church for about a year, when yet again, I lost the desire to return and had a break leading up to and enduring the 2016 Christmas New Year school break. Something wasn't right, but it does get better. I'll be going into detail now, because from here, it's the most exciting and fun part, because God began directly leading and ordering my steps by speaking to me, giving me dreams and night visions and divine appointments. It was all very new and exciting for me, seeing God at work like this. It was my spiritual awakening. He awakened me from my slumber. Father set me on a path of learning about truth versus deception, being holy and set apart, spiritual faithfulness versus spiritual adultery, and what he requires for someone to be a pure, spotless, wrinkle-free bride. He is looking for a holy people as a bride for Jesus, the bridegroom. This is what it's all about. No cheating on him. This is why I think adultery is the only reason a husband and a wife can divorce. So the lesson started with using Christmas as a case study or example around about October, November 2016. My husband asked me, so if you don't want to do yoga for spiritual reasons, why do you still celebrate Christmas? I thought, well, why indeed? Even though I'd vaguely heard about of its pagan origins before, I never bothered to research its history. This time, I felt prompted to investigate it. As I was reading and listening to various sources, both for and against, I kept hearing repeatedly, come out of her. I then transitioned to learning about false prophets and teachers, teaching a false Christ within false religions and cults, and then even within Christian ministries, mega churches, and regular churches, the latter of which surprised me. But as I said to a Mormon friend who I was trying to awaken, I was also now learning truths about the mainstream churches. I couldn't only point at Mormonism. Well, I now know what is happening in the church was prophesied, but then that's exactly how biblically illiterate I was. So I kept hearing those words come out of her. I had to Google these words, and the verse I got was uh, Revelation 18 verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. I then read on a little bit about Babylon, but not what or who it really is. But I did deduce that false religions, cults, teachings, etc. must be Babylon. About a month or two later, I happened to read a couple of Bible commentaries which confirmed this. I sat there amazed and stunned that God was speaking to me and teaching me. The Holy Spirit is indeed our teacher, as John 14, 26 states. I felt truly blessed. I could go on and on about the lesson in Christmas, as my sons well know, but that is for one to research themselves, asking Holy Spirit for guidance. The basic lesson was that Christmas is not a God-ordained holy day or feast. If we are truly his followers, we are told to obey his commands, of which observing his birth is not one of them. Birthdays are actually another pagan feast. 
We're not to make up our own feast to honour God, no matter how much we think it will please him, because we love him so much. That's presumptuous. God used to smite the presumptuous. We must follow God, God's way, not our own way. Christmas is a man-made tradition, of which there are many verses against. Read also 1 Kings 12, where a man-made tradition caused Israel to perpetually sin against God. I read this recently, and it was like an anniversary confirmation. This is exactly what church leaders, down through the centuries, have caused Christians to do in churches by celebrating Christmas. This is also what culture has perpetuated. It's so ingrained that we can't see the forest for the trees, so to speak. Christmas intermingles God with false gods, which he constantly taught Israel against, and who constantly failed him, causing him to be jealous. It's the mixing, the holy with the unholy, and the clean with the unclean, per Leviticus 10.10. 10. We are called to serve and eat at the table of only one master, not with one foot in the world and the other in God's kingdom. It's fornication, adultery and being unfaithful to God. In short, an abomination. In Corinthians, we're told that Israel is our example, so we need to learn from their mistakes and listen to what God wishes to teach us. I therefore rejected Christmas that year. In my zeal, I shared my newfound knowledge with all, including my current pastor, who responded by justifying Christmas and sent me a couple of supporting articles. During this time of learning, I had a special experience. After a time of more research, I had a nap and was about to fall asleep. I was aware my mind was void of any thoughts when the lyrics to to a song called As the Deer Pants for Water came to me, they just popped into my head. I'd not heard or sang this song for decades, as it's a song from my childhood, which my mother played on the old tape recorder at home, I think, or maybe from church too. These are the lyrics that I heard. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire. And I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone will my spirit yield. I thanked God and fell asleep. It was... It was like a... Um, blessing and a confirmation that I was on the right track. Um, I now call it our jam and I've saved it to my praise and worship playlist. So after about six months of learning I asked myself so how does this all pertain to me? As I pondered this it came to me the pastor who justified Christmas and put up an accursed idol of jealousy, the Christmas tree, in his church, like the majority of pastors and churches in, any, in my country and the world, was disobedient. Refer again to Deuteronomy 6 and 7, Jeremiah 10, 1 Kings 12. The entire Old Testament speaks of it, and the New Testament confirms it. Anyways, I may be a bit slow, but that Saturday afternoon, I finally understood that I must come out of her. Mystery Babylon, which is any church promoting false teachings and man-made traditions. Just as well, I'd already stopped attending, again. I found this definition at Bible.org. Babylon's description as the great harlot refers to the spiritual prostitution and fornication that categorizes the apostate church of the tribulation, which is unfaithful and rejects the Lord Jesus Christ as her husband. I haven't been directed to attend elsewhere, such as a Messianic Jewish church or a Hebrews Roots group. Um, that 
the latter of which I put the brakes on after a quick search. Uh, in the next month I received two dream confirmations of this calling out together with many others suddenly popping up all over the place. Uh, in the first dream I woke in the morning to see roaches crawling on a motel room wall that had the morning light shining on it. Then I was lifting the bed mattress up and shone a flashlight underneath to see lots of crawling bugs and creepy crawlies. Initially I wrote this off as a strange just before you wake up dream until two days later I came across an article about a dream that a Ryan Johnson had at charismamag.com. It was entitled Cockroaches Will Be Exposed, a Prophetic Warning for Church Leaders. Firstly, the article title got my attention. How often do you see the word cockroaches in a Christian article? Then I was stunned at the photo and caption of which said, Shining a light on the infestation, with a man holding a flashlight in a dark tunnel. I was blown away. I had never received dreams in my adult life. I did recall later that I had been asking God for dreams. So he answered my prayer. Um, another confirmation uh, was an article by Mario Murillo Ministries entitled, Is God Doing a Secret Work in You? Many more of the similar articles and dreams and prophecies just kept popping up everywhere. So God has been warning and sending out his messages everywhere that all would see and hear that his judgment and cleansing of evil is coming upon the church. In particular, it seems, the shepherds who have led the flock astray. The second uh, dream confirmation it was a flash dream or vision just before awakening again. I saw a tall, fat, black, upright roach preaching at a pulpit. Enough said. And then about four months later, I received a third roach dream. I saw them crawling out of a hole in a wooden staircase and noticed um, a foul odour coming up from the hole. As I thought about it, the phrase coming out of the woodwork came to me, so I looked up its meaning. The very first image result was of roaches crawling out of a hole in a wall. The definitions found tie in with roaches and vermin being exposed. Uh, they are an un unpleasant person or thing emerging from obscurity, be revealed, come out of hiding, come or crawl out of the woodwork, to appear after having been hidden or inactive for a long time, especially something unpleasant, something that appears suddenly, often in great numbers, usually of someone or something unwelcome, unwanted, comes from the tendency of vermin, especially roaches that seem to emerge from the woodwork in kitchens, cabinets, floorboards, where they nest when, for example, a light is turned on. The foul odour represents the stench of their sins reaching God's nostrils. God just can't make it any clearer, can he? I just wanted to make a note about Easter as well. After sending a video teaching to friends and my former pastor, he said it was poorly researched and of course supported Easter with accompanying attachments. So I did more research, but I couldn't bring myself to read the pastor's justifications. During one of the two teachings I listened to, I was strongly, strongly convicted and started weeping hard. One minute I was simply listening, and the next minute I was suddenly crying. I'm sure it grieves God because the issue is much more important than Christmas, where I had no tears, because the observance of Jesus' death and resurrection as our sacrificial Passover lamb has been cor corrupted. Christians have been led away from the true way of remembering his sacrifice for us, which is the Passover, about a week prior to pagan witchcraft Easter, I believe. So God led me out of the church organization. 